वेलकम इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द टाइम सीरीज एक्सप्लोरेशन यूजिंग आर सो द टाइम सीरीज एक्सप्लोरेशन कॉन्सेप्ट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेन यू वॉन्ट टू प्रोडिक्ट द टाइम सीरीज डेटा ओके मीन वेन यू वॉन्ट टू फोरकास्ट सो दैट मीन वी कैन यू कैन से डिवाइड द टाइम सीरीज डेटा इन टू डिफरेंट कॉम्पोनेट्स सच एज द लेवल कॉम्पोनेंट द ट्रेंड कॉम्पोनेंट एंड द सीजनैलिटी कॉम्पोनेंट so uh, these components are very important because they are indicating the pattern of the data okay so because based on the pattern of the data we are going to decide which type of the time series forecasting method we should apply and in addition to this pattern we have the random error so we want to apply such a forecasting method that this random variation or you can say the forecasting error should be as minimum as possible so right now i am going to talk about how we can identify whether our data contain the trend component or not how we should know that whether the seasonality component in our time series data is available or not so for that i am going to use these two packages like one is a forecast package in r and another one is tsutils okay so first of all uh i'm going to talk about uh, how can i translate the um, any data series okay uh, into a time series form like as you can see that if i have the data set in years and we have the observation against every particular year so in r how can i translate into a time series i should use the function called ts then uh, bracket start that is a ts function which is the c which is concatenating these observations okay so we are writing down the observation and then i am state st uh, stating that the starting year or the starting point is 2012 so once we run this then we are going to store in a variable called y so this time series data is going to be stored in a y so if you want to store the monthly data okay so how you can do that So we are saying that this is again a time series function. This is T S Z. That is the variable in which we have the store the data, and then we are telling that the frequency is twelve because it's a monthly data. So that's why we are telling that the frequency is twelve, and we know that in one year we have the twelve months. And the starting point is we are mentioning that the starting point is two thousand three is the year. and one is indicating the first month which is the january is the starting month if the starting point is uh, february then you can write down two over here similarly <clears throat> so that mean in a time series the most important thing is we have to mention these three things one is the data okay the variable in which we have the data set we have to mention the frequency whether it's a yearly data or a monthly data or a weekly data or hourly data and then we need to mention the starting point so here i am giving the example of the daily data okay how you can mention it so either you can mention the data in a frequency that is 7 okay uh, in order to identify the weekly or annual seasonality perspective you can mention the number of days so why we are using 365. to 7 in order to capture the leap years data okay so this is the number of weeks uh, if we are considering these number of days okay similarly we can mention the hourly data okay or a daily seasonality perspective okay if uh, we are considering or a weekly perspective hourly okay uh, data okay and then we have the annually perspective so this is basically the uh, in terms of if we have the data in the minutes so let me see in the r uh, uh, if i am going to open it so first of all i need to install the forecast package i have to need to install this particular package which is tsutils okay once we have install it then we can call these two libraries okay and then i have the data set three types of the data set the first one is basically the ts1 uh, text file okay and then i am stating that the starting time period is 2011 so let me show you this uh, data set which is ts1 okay so as you can see that this is a starting point and i am mentioning this is the 
the year starting point is 2011 so with the help of r code okay and then one is basically indicating the first quarter okay and this frequency is indicating that we are considering as a quarterly data okay if i am writing down 12 then i am considering as a monthly data okay so if this is ts1 if i am writing down over here is ts1 as you can see that we have uh, the uh, yearly data in terms of quarter wise okay similarly we have the ts2 data okay then over here we have the monthly data okay so this is the monthly data we have similarly we have the ts so i'm just reading the data okay this is also the monthly data this is also the monthly data now what i am going to see is i am storing this ts2 data okay into the y and then i am plotting this particular y as you can see that so we have on x axis that is the time on y axis we have the data points okay as we can see graphically that it took like there is a uh, increasing trend but in order to know the trend we can perform different type of analysis but before that let me show you uh, the uh, that how you can call uh, represent different type of the data in r if you want to uh, represent annually data quarterly data the frequency should be 4 monthly data the frequency should be 12 the daily data the frequency should be weekly hourly or half hourly even okay and these are the starting point you have to mention while you are calling the function of ts okay now let's do the trend analysis using r so in order to perform the trend analysis as we have seen in the r that we should draw the uh, time series plot okay on x axis we have time on y axis we have y and with the help of this we are going to apply the centered moving average in order to identify whether there is any trend or not okay so what this cmav that is a centered moving average data y is the variable in which we have the data set and then output plot is equal to one okay what this function is going to do is it is automatically going to decide whether we have to calculate the centered moving average uh, three you know, quarter or a four quarter or a uh, sorry this is a monthly data so whether it's a three month four month five month or a 15 month it is this function is going to be decided automatically but if you want to force it that it should apply three months a uh, moving average or a four month or a five month you can do that so let me show you so so here we have uh, stored the data into the y we have plotted it now i am forcing it that it should calculate the three month moving average so with the help of this so i can calculate three month that is cma okay as you can also see that on a graph it is also showing us okay because i have also plotted okay so similarly we can do the 15 months moving average okay as you can see that as we are start increasing this particular value so we can easily see the smoothness uh, in the line as well as it is also showing us some data point okay so uh, but if i am going without mentioning these numbers let r decided that what should be the average they are should compute then we can uh, use this particular function without mentioning the moving average so they have automatically pick the number okay and calculated the centered moving average and with the help of this one we can easily see that so there is a increasing trend or there is a linear trend right now uh, might be possible that uh, your data may have some missing numbers if your data have this uh, missing numbers like in this particular data set which i have used there is no missing number but if there is any missing number so the beauty of this particular function is if you are going to mention fill is equal to uh, you know, false okay so that is going to be calculated the missing number with the help of exponential smoothing method okay uh, in order to uh, fill that missing number okay so remember that right now uh, as we can see with the help of uh, this plot that it look like that there is a linear trend but we can also perform uh, a test which is called as basically Cox Stewart test 
okay how we can do that with the help of this one where edge not there is no change upward or downward which means there is no trend or h1 there is a change okay so if i am going to run this uh, particular command uh, that is th this one cox to it okay it is saying that the p value is 0 0.313 okay e power minus 10 so which is less than 5 percent so what is going to be our decision that if this particular p value is if this particular p value is less than our predecided value which is alpha 5 percent so we will say reject h naught so the reject h naught mean so there is a change in upward or a downward and as we can see from the graph so there is an increasing trend so which means the data must have a trend okay so uh, so this is basically a non-parametric test so you can also apply some other test in order to identify the trend analysis okay the second component if you want to find out the seasonality so for that we have a function called ses plot y okay so you can uh, use these numbers in order to draw different type of plots okay so let me show you how you can do that uh, over the seasonality first of all i am using the default seasonality plot that is this one if you are using two that is going to be this one the remaining thing and the output would be the same three four okay so you are getting different type of plots so how you can interpret it that is basically indicating this particular p value so they are basically applying a non-parametric uh, test uh, that is basically the fragment test and we can see that if the p value is less than or equal to zero you can say less than zero okay right now this is basically the p value if this is less than not only less than zero which is 0 0.05 okay so if this p value is less than 0 0.05 then we will say there is a seasonality but if it is greater than one then we will say there is no seasonality as we can see that the p value is less than five percent so that means this particular data set do contain some seasonality okay so i hope you got the idea how we can uh, perform the time series exploration using r in order to identify whether our data containing the uh, trend or whether our data containing the seasonality or not. So thank you so much. See you in the next video.